This is the second video in a series of three videos. All of the videos concern how we might uh, develop just-in-time adaptive interventions. And in particular, this video is a type of experimental trial that you could use to develop an adaptive intervention. And we're going to go through that experimental trial design in the context of a smoking cessation study in which uh, both myself and other members of the, my group are involved with. So this smoking cessation study is it's called Sense to Stop. And the goal is to develop a just-in-time adaptive intervention uh, with the, so that people will not relapse to smoking or, or at a minimum delay the time till they relapse to smoking. One of the reasons why people tend to relapse is because they're experiencing a lot of stress and they use the smoking to help them manage that stress. So in this particular study, we have a variety of uh, wearables. Uh, one is a chest band as well as a wristband. Both of these measure, uh, I believe it's 35 different sensor streams that are then used to classify every single minute as in that minute you're physiologically stressed versus you're not physiologically stressed. In future, actually the chest band will re be replaced by uh, a wearable sensor that's a little less burdensome. So what we're going to do as we go forward is we're going to think about what kinds of interventions, what kind of just-in-time adaptive intervention might you develop in order to help someone manage the stress and thus delay the time or prevent relapse to smoking. So our primary outcome, our distal outcome using the language of the first video is the number of days smoke-free after someone has decided to quit smoking. The intervention here is, do we provide a reminder to access the stress management exercises and practice them? These exercises are always on your phone and we'll just remind you to use them versus we don't bother you at all. What should we do, one or the other? We could do this at any minute. Indeed, the decision times or the decision points are at every minute during a 10 hour day. In the near term, now, our intervention, we already discussed that, it's aimed at helping you manage stress. So in the near term, the goal is to assess whether or not that intervention will help you reduce the amount of time you're stressed over the subsequent hour. So that's our proximal outcome, again, using the language from the first video. So what's a micro-randomized trial? A micro-randomized trial, in the in general, as each decision point or time, decision time, is randomized between the interventions. So in our case, we either provide a, a reminder to access the stress management intervention on the phone, or we don't bother the person at all. So we randomize between those two alternatives at every single decision point. So let's go back to sense to stop. What does that mean in the context of sense to stop? It, it means that every minute during a 10-hour day, one is being randomized. Now, we choose these probabilities so that across days, on average, one and a half messages will occur. So that's about um, three messages every two days when you're st currently stressed, and around three messages every uh, two days when you're currently not stressed. So as you can imagine, if the randomization is occurring every single minute of a 10-hour day, the randomization probabilities are pretty low. That's to, and the, of course, the whole purpose here is we don't want to overburden someone with many, many messages. So an average of one and a half reminders per day when stressed, one and a half when not stressed. So why are we micro-randomizing? Why are we going through this effort to randomize individuals to a reminder or not? What we could do instead, one might very well imagine, is that we might have access to a large data set on which we observe whether, when people access the uh, stress management exercises on their phone. We could look at the times, the, the timestamp at which they access it, and timestamps at which they don't access the stress management exercise app. And then we could look at the su uh, succeeding one hour and compare what does their stress look like an hour after they access the app versus an hour after they don't access the app. This would be a very natural thing to do. Of course, um, what the randomization does for us is it allows us to get a causal effect 
let's think about suppose unbeknownst to us the very highly motivated people are the people accessing the app whereas the less motivated people don't access the app then when we go to look at the effect of the application or the uh, using the application on your stress in the next hour we'll see oh man it looks really good it looks like it's really reduced the stress but it could be that motivated people are just they just manage their stress better so the reason why we're randomizing is to assess the causal effect and by knowing the causal effect we won't end up sending people reminders that are not even useful for them so in the sense to stress sense to stop um study one of the, our our goals is should we provide or prompt a, you to use a stress regulation exercise at times that you're stressed versus at times that you're not stressed um let's think about this it might be that when i'm currently stressed if you prompt me to uh practice stress management i might be so cognitively overloaded that it won't have any impact on me so it's better to only prompt me to practice when i'm not stressed on the other hand it may be that the very times i'm stressed is when i'll feel the need and i'll actually be able to utilize that stress management exercise it's just not clear when is it better to prompt people to practice their stress management exercises is it times of stress times of not stress so let's go through the elements of a micro randomized trial um we first we always record our outcomes our distal outcome is that's the time till relapse or hopefully never that a person doesn't relapse our proximal outcome in this case because our interventions have to do with stress management our proximal outcome is the amount of stress in the subsequent hour after a decision point our tailoring variables this is whether or not we decide our potential tailoring cuz this is whether or not we decide to provide a reminder in this case stress is the uh the primary uh tailoring variable at each decision point we ma- we randomize between interventions provide a reminder versus not and at the end of the trial we assess our causal effects we assess whether or not stress really impacts the effectiveness of this reminder it could be also location affects the uh impacts the effectiveness of the reminder we might discover that as well and then we construct a proposal for a just in time adaptive intervention okay as a health researcher the question you want you might want to ask yourself is well are these micro randomized trials useful in my setting in my research suppose you're uh studying how best to provide an alert when someone is showing signs of impending suicide attempt Now, uh suicide attempts tend to be occur very rarely. This is exactly the kind of setting in which it would not be good to micro randomize. That is you wouldn't randomize every time there was an impending suicide attempt. You just won't get enough information. In contrast, if you're studying how uh helping someone manage their stress, say to prevent suicide, prevent relapse to drug use, Well stress changes very rapidly over the day. It's a natural type of uh circumstance that is good for using uh microrandomization to understand. Adherence urges to smoke and so on. Now two other areas um in which you may or may not be a want to use a microrandomized trial uh are what you can measure. and the rate and how unobtrusively you can measure this data for example can you unobtrusively measure physiological stress how can you unobtrusively measure um eating habits food intake and so on as sensors develop uh, and become increasingly more sophisticated i think we'll end up in settings where we'll be able to look at more and more uh types of behaviors because the sensors all allow us to unobtrusively collect information on eating behavior for example and so on. Okay, so micro randomized trials, what are they being used for? They're being used to build just in time adaptive interventions that will help people uh trying to quit smoking, 
help people who are trying to stay in, uh, in recovery after uh, uh, experiencing substance use, abuse, uh, help people who are trying to lose weight, help people who are trying to eat more healthily, and so on. If we can, together, if we can make just-in-time adaptive interventions more effective, this will improve people's access to care, providing care when they mo need it most, wherever they need it most, and indeed, in so sometimes even before they themselves know they need the care. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, this is the second video in a series of three. You'll find references for this video uh, below the video.